Hey guys, Joey here. In this video, we're going to learn about the box shadow property. But the first question is, why should you even learn the box shadow property? Let's look at some examples. So look at this website over here. Okay, so you can see these buttons over here. There is a drop shadow on the buttons over here. This is made using the box shadow property. Okay, so let's inspect it. So over here, I actually made it over here. And you can see that there is a difference between the first buttons and the last buttons over here. This buttons doesn't have a shadow, but these buttons have a shadow over here. You can see that this is called a drop shadow. And you can clearly say that these two buttons looks much better than these two buttons over here. And using that property, I made this website over here like this. In short, the more details you can put on your website, the more beautiful and more artistic it will look. There are various properties that allows us to do this work and box shadow is one of them. And today we're going to inspect that property. So the box shadow property has in total five inputs. You can see that we have the offset X, the offset Y, the blur radius, spread radius, and we have the color. So let's start experimenting with all of them. By the way, I wrote an entire article on the topic that we're going to discuss today. Over here, you can see that if you scroll down, then you're going to find those inputs over here. You can see that this is the offset X. Then we have, if you scroll down, then we have the offset Y and then we have uh, the blur radius, the spread radius, etc. So this article has nice illustrations over here as well as the source code over here so that you can experiment it with your own or you can revise it from here more easily, efficiently and quickly. Link of this article is in the video description. Go and check it out. Today we're going to make these buttons over here and along with that we're going to add the drop shadow property using the box shadow property. And along the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can utilize this cool website over here. This is called keyframes.app. Link is in the video description. Pick any code editor you wish, but for this tutorial, I'm going to write it on codepen.io because it has a simple interface. Okay. So come to the HTML section and write dot box one tab. Okay. Inside over here, you write a button. Okay. Control S. We're done with the HTML section. Now pull the CSS over here. So first of all, we're going to remove the default styles of our browser. Okay. So you can see that we have a little bit of margin padding over here. Okay. We're going to remove that. Those are default styles of our browser. Okay. You hit star curly braces like this. Okay. M zero PX tab P zero PX tab. Okay. So set the box sizing to border box, border box like this and set the font family to sans serif like this FF tab. Okay. SS tab like this. There we go. And now we're going to style the button over here. Okay. In order to select the button, write dot box one curly braces. Okay. You write width 200 pixels. Okay. Tap and height 80 pixels. Tap like this. Control S and we're going to set some, we're going to set some border around our button. Okay. So border write uh, 2px solid black like this. And there's our button over here. We're going to change the font size. Okay. So set the font size to um, 40 pixels. Okay. Like this. Let's place the button at the very center over here of our button. Okay. In order to do that, we can use either use the flex or the grid. I'm going to use the grid. Okay. D grid tap. Okay. Place content or you can use the place items as well. Right center over here. Okay. We have the button over here and now I'm going to place the button little bit over here. 100 pixels from the left, 100 pixels from the top. Okay. Let me show you like this. You write margin. Okay. So first look at this 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So this value over here represents the top. The next one is the right. This is the bottom and this is the left. Okay. We need two values. I mean two properties the top and the left. Okay. So we're going to write over here. You write 80 pixels over here like this and over here, write 100 pixels. Okay. Now you can see that the button is pushed a little bit over here. So we're done with our setup. Let's start discussing first of all, the offset X, then the offset Y and then the color. Okay. Listen, understand this. The X axis is this one. Okay. And the Y axis is this one. Okay. X and y axis. So once this doubt is cleared from our mind, look at this button over here. Okay. So we're going to add some drop shadow. The offset x property is used to move the shadow from the left to the right. Okay. Like this 
of our button okay let me show you visually okay so this is the drop shadow property over here if i increase the value to positive something like this happens look the shadow is going to the right but if the value is negative what happens is the the shadow will go to the left like this look like this okay so right left right left like this this is all possible using the offset x input of the box shadow property so let's come back to code pen and let's experiment with our findings okay so you write box shadow over here at minimum you have to put three inputs okay otherwise it's not gonna work like this zero zero rgba okay for those of you who don't understand what is the rgba let me tell you r means red g means green b means blue okay so this when you write code over here the color codes there is an extra a over here okay this is called alpha what it does is it sets the opacity of our color so here's an example okay so let's set our background color or let's let me actually comment this from here so that i can actually make you understand what the alpha does okay look bgc tab it means background color okay let's set it to let's say rgba like this so this is the website of flat ui colors okay you pick any palette okay let's say that i want to select the flat ui palette version one from here okay and let's say and now we're going to change the format from the hex to the rgb sorry rgba over here okay and let's say that we want to we want to copy the emerald from here okay the color is copied now come over here and we're going to paste this color over here Control z like this and now we can see that it is emerald color now look at here okay it is set to one which means that the opacity level is 100 percent which means that we're gonna see the color 100 percent but if you want to change the opacity from let's say from one one means 100 percent to let's say 20 percent okay so 0 0.2 like this control s and you can see that the color is 20 percent we can see just 20 percent of the color and if you want to change that to let's say 50 percent so 0 0.5 like this control s and now you can see just 50 percent of the color so this is how the system works okay let me actually delete this from here control s i hope you understood it and i'm gonna link this website in the video description so that you can go and experiment with your own findings so come back to dot box one over here and uncomment this from here and over here we're gonna set the color to zero 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 by the way this is the color of our shadow okay and now we're gonna set the opacity to let's say uh, 0 0.4 which means 40 percent okay 0 0.4 oh sorry 0 0.4 like this Control s and it's not gonna we're not gonna see anything okay because we have to set a value on these zeros over here so this first zero represents the offset x and the second value over here represents the offset y okay so look at our chart over here okay we have the offset x the offset y and at the very last we have the color property okay let's actually give a border radius to our button because it looks quite ugly border radius let's set it to 8 pixels okay Control s now it looks quite good there we go okay now if we want to move that shadow by the way we already have a shadow behind our button okay now in order to see that we have to move that shadow so on the offset x this is offset x offset y okay so let's set it to let's say 20 pixels okay like this control s and now you can see that look we have a shadow over here it moved to the right because we have a positive value over here but if we have a negative value what will happen let's experiment minus 20 pixels like this control s and now you can see that the shadow is moving to the left okay I hope you understood how to experiment with the offset x value now let's experiment with the offset y value which is this one the second one over here okay let's set it to let's say um, 8 pixels okay like this now we can see a little bit of shadow over here on the right side because it is a positive value and over here let's say um, uh, 20 pixels okay then what will happen is the shadow will move down where on the y axis okay it is a positive value but if we set it to negative value it will go up like this look we're gonna set it to minus over here Control s and there we go we can see that the shadow is moving a little bit on the top i also mentioned a website keyframes.app you're gonna get the link on the video description let's experiment with this cool website so once you're on the website click this create an animation okay 
basically this website is used to make animations but we're gonna use this to experiment with the drop shadow property okay so you can see this doodle over here but if you want to change it you can select this target over here and you can set the html over here and then the css over here okay, as well for instance here is an example you can come to our experiment over here and you can copy this code from here and paste it over here like this look Control v okay we have a button over here and then on the css you can copy this code from here okay except this uh, shadow from here uh, control c and paste it over here control v and this one and you can see that we have our button over here okay in, a, in order to experiment with the button over here look at these properties over here we have the transform then we have the 3d transform color and text then sizing position and look at these borders okay we need just this one by the way, in the future, I'm going to make a video on how you can make cool animations using just CSS and I'm going to use this same website on that video. If you want that video, feel free to subscribe right now. All right, now click this border over here and you can see this border, sorry, box shadow over here. We're going to experiment over here. Okay. So the first value we are going to input is the offset X, then the offset Y. So over here you write zero. Okay. And then zero again. Don't worry. We're going to set values over here okay and now write the rgba value rgba like this and we need zero 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 it means the black color and then we're gonna set the opposite to 40 percent 0 0.4 0 0.4 like this there we go and we cannot actually see anything because the offset x and y is set to zero each okay so in order to change that you write 20 pixels over here like this and we can see this odd shadow over here that is because i actually forgot to change the class name over here okay you can see that there is already an id over here we have to use this id over here okay so i'm going to remove this from here well you can follow along with me as well and you can see that we have an id over here target element so we're gonna change this and write hashtag target Make sure that you don't make a spelling mistake over here, otherwise it's not gonna work. Now you can see that it works perfectly fine. Okay, if you want to change the value, you can do it as well over here. Let's set it to from 20 pixels to um, 40 pixels, okay? From 40 pixels, let's change it to let's say 100 pixels, okay? You can see that, you can visually see that. But if you want to change it to let's say negative value, which means that you want to move the shadow to the left, what you can do is you're gonna set a minus over here and you can see that the shadow is moving to the left because it's a negative value on the offset x now let's experiment with the offset y which is this zero over here okay let's set our box shadow to eight just eight pixels okay um, and then if you want to experiment with the offset y let's set it to 20 pixels okay over here and you can see that the shadow is moving at the bottom in order to move it to the top you're gonna set it to minus over here like this there we go you can experiment with this app so once you're happy with the result what you can do is you're gonna click this get css over here and then you can copy the code over here so look at this we have the box shadow over here okay you just need this so you're gonna copy this from here Control c and then we're gonna come back to our experiment over here and we're gonna paste it over here like this and it's gonna work i hope you understood these three values the offset x the offset y and the color property let's experiment with the blur radius and spread radius okay now i'm on figma let's actually visually see what is happening to our box because of the blur radius property don't worry we're gonna write this on code pen okay so i'm gonna select this box over here and i'm gonna give it a drop shadow over here like this and i'm gonna increase the value by the way the opacity is set to 70 percent you can see that over here and i'm gonna increase the blur you can see that the black color is spreading around our box like this and it has no negative value we cannot just give uh, minus minus 50 like this it will not work you can also experiment you can also experiment with the blur radius over here on the keyframes.app website okay so let's say that i want a blur radius of 50 pixels okay so i'm gonna give this 50 pixels over here and in the meantime you can see that the offset x and the offset y is set to zero pixels each okay now you can see that the color is actually spreading if you want to copy the code you can copy the code from here as well but let's go to code pen and experiment with ourselves and this is the offset x this is the offset y and we're gonna write the blur radius over here okay let's say uh 
we want the blur radius of 40 pixels okay 40 pixels like this Control s and now you can see that the shadow is blurring around the box like this and um, for now let's set the box shadow to zero pixels okay like this there we go we have a nice blur over here and if you want you can and if you want to see it much better what you can do is you can increase the opacity to 80 percent 0.8 like this and we can see our blur over here now let's look at the last input which is a spread radius okay i'm on figma again let's visually see what is actually happening to our box because of the spread radius okay i'm gonna select this box and at the very bottom on the effects i'm gonna select this drop shadow and i have set the offset x offset y and the blur radius to zero and now i'm gonna select the spread over here and i'm gonna increase the size okay like this and you can see that the color is actually increasing in size instead of spreading or moving you can see that like this and if you decrease it then it's gonna decrease shrink in size but if you set it to zero now we can see nothing but if you go to negative value nothing will actually happen look you cannot see anything on the keyframes.app website if you want to experiment then you're gonna come after the blur radius over here first offset x then offset y then blur radius and then the spread radius over here okay before the color let's set the spread radius to let's say uh, 50 pixels as well okay 50 pixels like this and you can see that the color is actually spreading oh by the way let me actually remove the spread i mean the blur from here okay now you can see that it is actually spreading like this to be honest this looks really ugly it will look good if you combine the blur radius and the spread radius together like this look if i set it to let's say the blur to 50 pixels like this and let's set the spread radius to 10 pixels like this now it looks quite good okay now we are on code pen so this is the offset x offset y blur radius and we're gonna write the spread radius over here right here before the color okay over here let's set to 50 pixels okay and before that we're gonna set this to zero like this i mean the blur radius over here and this is a spread radius and you can see that this is the result we have so far we learned all the values of the box shadow property now let's make ourselves a beautiful looking button with a drop shadow all right then so we are back on code pen we remove uh, these values from here and first of all let's set the offset x to 8 pixels like this offset y let's set it to 10 pixels and the blur let's set it to 10 pixels like this pixels and let's set the spread to one just one pixels like this in terms of the opacity let's set it to just 0 0.5 which means 50 percent like this Control s and we have ourselves a very beautiful button at the very bottom of the article that i wrote you're gonna find this section this is called the additional resource section you're gonna get the website of the flat ui colors the keyframes.app and you're gonna get this website over here get css scan let's check it out so on this website you're gonna get examples of various box shadow values let's have a look okay so if you scroll down um, let's say that uh, i like this one okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click it over here and it's gonna copy me the source code okay if i come back to code pen and if i come at the very bottom over here let's say i want to remove this okay now Control v over here you can see that we have pasted the source code and this button looks exactly like this one over here let's say that you want to experiment with um this one okay we're gonna click it over here it's gonna copy as a source code okay and we're gonna paste it over here like this Control v and Control s now look at that our button drop shadow looks exactly like this one like this one over here there are a lot of examples over here and you can see that we have some unique examples over here as well and if you scroll down then you're gonna get some colored examples as well so we're done with the tutorial if you like the video give a like share it with a friend and feel free to subscribe till then take care and i'll see you in the next video bye bye